And we're coming to you live from New York City as usual. My name is Frank Allen, and the name of the show is called The Coffee Hour. We're here every Friday as usual. For those of you who are regulars, you already know the protocol. We come here every Friday at 10 a.m. for a whole full hour of uh, a little fun, a little conversation, and uh, the whole nine yards. And that uh, we wrap up your week, get you into the weekend. That's exactly what we're going to do. I thank you so much for being along with us. Uh, we want to say hello to all of you people who are out there who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube as we simulcast each week on these uh, programs. And of course, if you don't catch us on one, you can always catch us on the other. And if you are on uh, YouTube, uh, we want to say hi to you guys too. Subscribe to us. Subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. This way you'll never miss a show. We'll talk to you more about that later. But later on in the program, we've got uh, our 2020 feature, as usual, coming up 20 minutes past the hour. Brian Camp will be here with the latest developments in today's world of sports with sports update. DJ Pete is on the other side of that, the 20 to the hour. However, he's not here today. He's not going to be on the air with us today, but he did leave us all of his information that we're going to relay to you. And, of course, DJ, he always does the uh, information on entertainment. Uh, we talk about that. And of course, later on in the program, too, we are going to uh, give you our picks of the week for the weekend. Uh, those of you who love those old time movies or Turner Classic movies, I have a few of those for you and they're all coming in. So thank you so much for being along with us. So let's get started. And what would the coffee hour be without a little coffee? So ladies and gentlemen, excuse me while I shoot up. That's delicious. That's delicious. What a way to start the day. And people are starting to come in, so I want to say hi to you guys uh, coming in. I want to wave to you guys. And all of you who are on uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, hello again, and thank you so much for being along with us. We've got our weather forecast coming up in a few minutes, and those of you who are going to come in, if you're going to uh, speak to us, you know, let us know the town you're coming from, where you're coming from, and the weather forecast. But if you're in New York, don't worry about it. I will take care of all of that. That's coming up. So let's get the show started right away, ladies and gentlemen, with a little hand clap, as we always do. And that hand clap is for you, of course, uh, all of you dedicated people who watch us each week on our show and being so diligent about it. So we want to give you that hand clap. That hand clap, by the way, also goes out to all of the people who work in hospital, doctors, nurses, and all of our hospital personnel who's been with us through the pandemic, along with all of the uh, people, the first responders, the firefighters, police officers, all the mom and pop stores, and all the grocery stores, supermarkets, laundromats, all those places that stayed open. And while they did it, they did it all safely. They kept that six foot distance away. Remember when we started with this pandemic? Now, here we are again, once again, and it seems like we're stepping backwards because now we're into another wave of what they call the Delta variant. And that's taking over right now along with COVID. And uh, so therefore, knowing all of that, we still advise you, we only advise you uh, to get vaccinated. There are three vaccinations on the market, right? You have the J&J, &J, which is only a one-shot deal. You have the... Um, uh, Moderna and the Pfizer, which requires two shots that will get you fully vaccinated. Now, a lot of you are fully vaccinated. A lot of people around the country are fully vaccinated. I understand that more than half of the country now is vaccinated. So that's a good sign. If that story is true, that's a good sign, as, as opposed to the last time we were talking about only half the country was vaccinated. So it seems like more and more people are getting vaccinated after everything that's going on. Kids are back in school now. You know, and we want to keep them safe. We want to keep our teachers safe. The people who are around these kids, we want to make sure that they're vaccinated. And um, because I couldn't, I couldn't fathom the thought about having my child go to a school where the teacher is not vaccinated, where the teacher is supposed to set the example and, of course, keep their children safe. So we want to make sure that everybody's vaccinated. If you're on the fence. Well, please, you know, try to get off that fence and, and do it. It's very simple. All you have to do is just go to places where they vaccinate you. And they're, they're all over the place now. You can go to your local pharmacist. 
your pr primary doctor may have a supply a uh, supply of some of the vaccinations or the vaccines and uh, of course there are places where you can go uh, stations uh, centers that open up uh, to supply all of these goods for you and uh, of course uh, not to mention the test if you're being tested of course there are a lot of a lot of places they even have places on the street where they park the trucks uh, uh, right there at the corner and of course they have they set up these tents for people uh, who want to take tests you know they set them up and it's just easy it only takes five seconds it doesn't take that long and you're in and you're out so uh, you have all of these things available now and all you have to do is just apply yourself and if you're thinking that uh, the vaccine is going to cause certain things in your body that will make you weird or uh, it's not the truth it's not the truth uh, so let's get all of that straight it's safe they're safe i took mine and uh on the 20th now they're talking about uh the availability of uh, the of, uh, of a booster shot that's all available now i understand that uh, as far as moderna goes it's going to take a little more time but pfizer uh, that's going to be right on schedule for the 20th. It's going to be available. So those of you who are fully vaccinated already, uh, it's time to take that booster shot. And that's available. That'll be available on the 20th. That's about three days away. And uh, you can go and get yours. All right. Uh, and I'm not due myself. I think they're going by the ages. I don't know. But I'm myself, uh, I'm not going to be due until December because they suggesting that you should uh, take that at least five, six to eight de uh, eight months of your second vaccination, providing you took the vaccination from uh, 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 Pfizer or Moderna. And of course, J&J is only one shot. But uh, eight months after that, you should take a booster shot, you know. And um, the wise thing to do, take, take what you took the first time you never mix your drink i never mix my drinks so you take what you take the first time since i'm pfizer i take pfizer if you're moderna take moderna if you're j and j take j and j uh if science says different then i guess you go by that but in the meantime the most important thing now is to make sure that you get vaccinated and and do that you know right away all kinds of places are open and if you have any uh particular um doubt about where to go all you have to do is it's a matter of googling that's all you have to do is just google and you can find out places in your area you know where these things are available to you it's no excuse and it's no problem you know it's all over the place you can't escape it it's right there right in front of your face so do that today thank you ladies and gentlemen if you're just joining us right away i want to say hi once again people are coming in now so i just want to say hi once again and you're tuned to the coffee hour and of course, uh, as I said, uh, minutes from now, Brian Camp will be here with his first part of the 2020 feature, and that's uh, uh, sports. I want to thank all of you people, uh, all of my friends, all of my Facebook followers, all of the Coffee Hour followers, all of the people who follow us on Talkback Live on Thursday night, all of you people who follow this show and follow me all around. I want to thank all of you. You understand that uh, this is my 50th, 51st year in broadcasting so i'm celebrating my 51st anniversary in broadcasting and it's been a long run and a great run and i'm still having fun right now doing it all and uh i want to thank all of you people for the love and support and all the great comments so uh so thank you so much for that uh some people said uh on facebook you know they posted on my facebook wall you should do another 50 years well <laughs> i don't know about that I'm, I'm enjoying let's just live for the moment that's what i say good morning ruby how are you today ruby out of brooklyn new york uh, says good morning she's out there thank you so much for joining us and um and uh, oh you know by the way we are also uh in our third day we're celebrating our third day and this is very important you know we want to just mention this it's the third day of uh hispanic heritage month we're into the third day so to all of my uh, Latino brothers and sisters and friends, I want to uh, just congratulate you guys. Enjoy it and because you deserve it. So, you know, everybody's celebrating. I'm celebrating 51 years in broadcasting. And here we are at the, the third day of Hispanic History Month. 
there's a lot to celebrate on that. And I'm pretty sure there are going to be a lot of street fairs and a lot of cultural uh, demonstrations and things like that for that. that. That would be a good thing. So thank you so much for that. Uh, it's 10 minutes past the hour right now. And um, thank you again for joining us. So excuse me while I shoot up. <laughs> a lot of people ask me where I get that phrase. That's like a just to clear it up, I know it's a, jug, a drug related phrase, but the reason why I say that, and I just say, and I've been saying that for years, just for fun, uh, it's, they always say that coffee is a stimulant, so therefore coffee is a drug. Sugar, sugar is a stimulant, so therefore sugar is, is a drug. Uh, alcohol is a stimulant, so alcohol is a drug. So uh, I just use that phrase, you know, before I take a sip of coffee, excuse me while I shoot up. There's no, uh, in, nothing intended or drug uh, related uh, phrase for that. So just wanted to get that straight. Uh, let's see, Ruby wants to know, what do you think about sending the kids uh, to school, uh, sending the kids to school there on that uh, old fashioned, uh, uh, they're old enough to get the uh, vaccine. Uh, that are aren't are they? Uh, uh, let me see. She wants to know um, what do you think about the sending the kids to school there on that old that are old enough to get the vaccine. Ruby, I think um, I, I would like to see the kids back in school. I really would like to see the kids back in school, and if they're old enough to get vaccinated, of course, you know. But, you know, I, I'd say do everything on a safe way. We're all back out here now. It's not that we're stuck in our houses anymore. We're not stuck in our houses anymore. So we're all out there, adults, children, they're all out there, and especially the children, they want to get out and meet their friends. They, they, they were stuck in houses uh, for a long time. You know, they were taking their education to the computer all the time. And I think that was kind of like, boring to them. They want to get back with their friends. But what I think, I think um, if they're vaccinated and they continue to wear their mask and they keep a certain distance, you know, if the, if the teacher, the teacher, by the way, is more important that he or she is vaccinated as well, you know, so a safe environment. So yeah, I would like to see the kids back in school. For the kids that are not vaccinated, um, or too young to be vaccinated. <sighs> That's another story. They're, they're too young to be vaccinated. You have kids that are younger and not old enough to get vaccinated and still in school. Uh, that That's a good question. You know, I don't want to lay out anything out there and, and then uh, 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 later on, you know, think about it and say, you know, why did I say that? Uh, that that's another story. I don't know. What do you think about that? Uh, what do you think about that? But Ruby is out there. She's saying she said uh, uh, that are not old enough. Oh, okay. So that was a type of she. Okay, I, I kind of figured that was the question. Who are not old enough to get vaccinated? Uh, okay, I just answered that. That's kind of a, a question that uh, that's hard to answer because you don't want to send kids out there uh, that'll be in danger. Uh, and if they're not vaccinated and you want to make danger to other kids in the school, you know, so I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I that's that's a tough question. Uh, maybe they should continue the education uh, online uh, or have tutors, particularly if they're vaccinated, you know, have tutors come to the home or something like that or online, you know. We have to be very careful with the kids who are not vaccinated yet. We have to take care of them. So that question is a tough one. Uh, I'm going to be safe and say, let's hold up on that. I'm going to be safe enough to say that. Let's hold off on that. Because I don't think that would be a wrong answer. That would be a safe answer. So let's just hold up on the younger kids going back to school right now. But for the ones who are old enough to get vaccinated, uh, let's do that. And she says her grandson is 11 years old. I, I, Ruby, I, again, again, uh, your grand, your granddaughter, oh, that's your granddaughter. Your granddaughter is too uh, young to get vaccinated. I would say, I think she has to be 12 years old, right? She's only 11 years old. Um, 
I want to be on the safe side and, 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 and have your, your granddaughter continue uh, her education online just to be on the safe side in the comforts and the safety of her own home with her own parents who are uh, who I, I would assume are safe from all of this and want to keep her safe. You want to keep all the children safe. So that that's my that's what I think. That's my that's the question you ask. And, and that's what I think. And uh, I, I hope it works out either way. And we want to take care of those kids. But that's why I say, you know, all of us should get vaccinated. Every one of us, men, women, children. Uh, and, and I hope pretty soon uh, for the younger people who are under 12 years old, these vaccines will be available to them so they can get back to normal like everyone else. And because, as I said, you know, kids are going to be kids. They want to meet their friends. They don't want to stay home. I, 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 I realized that was a tough venture for them. And I'm pretty sure it made them very irritable and, 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 and I don't know. Uh, so uh, the ones who are vaccinated now, they're back at school. And you could hear the, the kids say, you know, you watch TV. And you could hear them say, I'm glad I'm back in school. I, I want to be with my friends, you know. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure all of the kids, they love their parents, but they don't want to be around their parents. Come on, let's face it. The children don't want to be around their parents. They want to be around their friends. And so the safe way to do that is, as I always say, get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. See, these questions that come up, you know, you don't want to make them hard to answer. You want the, the only thing I can say, let's get let's do what we're supposed to do. Let's get vaccinated so we don't have to answer all of these questions and say, oh, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know how to answer that question. The, the, the answer to that question is get vaccinated, be safe and stop politicizing it because that's not going to work. So there you go. I see more people coming in the room, so I want to say thank you all for being with us on the coffee hour. It's 12 minutes past the hour right now on this Friday, and uh, I've got a weather forecast for you. Let me give you that weather forecast. If those of you who are coming in, Ruby, you don't have to do this because you're out of Brooklyn. I'll take care of the New York weather, but those of you who are coming from another town or another country now and you're out, out there, and um, we would love to... Uh, 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 have you, you know you know give us a weather forecast in your area what we have right now here in new york city is 71 degrees all right and it's climbing 71 degrees and what we're going to have today here's the weather forecast today it's a little dismal outside for the moment it's dismal outside for the moment cloudy uh with light with a little chance of rain showers happening today we'll have a high near 75 degrees winds will east will be northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour so it's cloudy right now and uh it's not going to be a washout or anything because the weather gets better tonight a few clouds on the way low 68 degrees winds will be north northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour and for a saturday tomorrow gets better partly cloudy skies high 86 degrees uh winds will be light and variable 86 degrees is some good temperature enjoy the rest of the summer because uh, Pretty soon it will be no more. For Saturday night, it will be clear skies. We have a low 67 degrees. Winds will be north northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And we wrap up our weekend with the better day out of the weekend here in New York for Sunday. Sunny skies all day. We'll have high temperatures of 79 degrees. And winds will be uh, north at um, 5 to 10 miles per hour. So we wrap up our weekend on a good note with that weather. And, and all in all, on the weekend here in New York, it's going to be uh, good. The only problem is that we have a slight uh, a threat of rain showers today here in New York City, but it's not going to be a washout. It's 71 degrees right now here in New York City. So what are the temperatures and the forecasts where you are? You come in and let us know. And we're just about a few seconds away from Brian Campbell, who will be along with the latest developments in today's world of sports on sports update. That's his part of the 2020 feature, which we always do each week. And of course, uh, we've got, again, uh, if you're just coming in, I just want to remind you also that we have those movies. If you like those Turner Classic movies, uh, we have a few that we want to recommend for the weekend. 
uh, just in case you're stuck in the house and you want something to entertain you. We have all of that for you, and it's all coming up. So as promised, we're going to go to Charlotte, North Carolina via telephone. I was there a couple of weekends ago, and I had a ball uh, working with Brian Camp, but he's on the phone right now with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Brian, how's it going? Good morning to you and good morning to all. Good morning, Ruby. Um, first time meeting you. Glad that you are here on the broadcast here. I hope all is well with you and everybody out there on YouTube and on Facebook. Hello to everybody. Uh, it is a dreary day, but uh, it's good. The weather is fair, 72 degrees. It's going to be cloudy all day today. No rain, but it's going to be cloudy. Temperatures going to go as high as 82 degrees. So, um, Still, the Queen City still welcomes everybody um, to come to the Queen City to visit us here in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I'm getting a little sick and irritated with these here hurricanes. Uh, <laughs> Hurricane Ida, Hurricane Larry, Hurricane Nicholas is on the scene, I hear now. Yeah. So um, these hurricanes, that's why they call it hurricane season. So, um, but, you know, we just have to do the best that we can and stay safe and continue to wear your mask and sanitize your hair. But in the day of sports, the world of sports, in the NFL, the Buffalo Bills is to, is to require fans at games to be vaccinated against COVID-19 to attend games at Highmark Stadium, that's where the Bills play, and Key Bank Center, home of the hockey, the Buffalo Sabres this season. Beginning September 26th, games against the uh, Washington football team, all fans ages 12 and up must receive at least one COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine shot in order to attend. That rule will expand to require all attendees over the age of age requirements to be fully vaccinated um, starting with the October 31st game against the Miami Dolphins. Masks will no longer be required. Those above of the age of 12 once the new policy is in place. I will say still wear your mask, still bring your mask. You never know who might catch uh, this virus. So even though you might be fully vaccinated or partially vaccinated, there's always still that chance that somebody that's in the stands could have caught it a couple of days before you did, before, before, the, before the game, and they could pass it along. So be very, very careful. Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball expands the list of who we are 21 to honor the late Roberto Clemente on September 15th. This time it will be in front of fans. As you know, last year they could not do this in front of the fans due to the pandemic, but now, now that they're allowing fans to come into the stadiums, into the arenas, you can, um, they now can wear their 21, not only on television, but they can wear it. Um, at live games at the stadium. Major League Baseball has extended the honor to inform personnel of Puerto Rican descent this year for the 20th annual Roberto Clemente Day. Clemente is the first Puerto Rican born and Latin player elected into Baseball Hall of Fame. Some of you may not remember uh, Roberto Clemente, but he died in a plane crash on New Year's Eve, 1972. That's the year he, re um, his last at bat, he hit a, a base hit, a double, for his 3,000 hit. Um, and then later, two months later, as he um, went on to, um, you know, passed away, unfortunately, a tragic uh, uh, plane crash, um, he was attempted to to bring humanita humanitarian aid to people affected by the devastating earthquake in Nicaragua. Uh, Milwaukee Blues, um, player, all-star, uh, Christian Yelich is purchasing 10,000 tickets to an upcoming home series, which is a home series means three games, two or three games, and giving them away for free. Yelich is buying the tickets in appreciation of the fans for next week's four games. Now, it's a four-game series, I beg your pardon, not three, two or three games, but this is going to be a four-game series with playoff implication involved against the second place St. Louis Cardinals. Now, Yelich has, uh, last year, before the 2020 season, signed a nine-year contract worth $215 million. Um, yeah, if you had that kind of money, you would buy 10,000 tickets, but he's doing it for a good cause. 
because of the love of the fans that show appreciation. That's a great gesture on his part. In the NBA, congratulations to the 2021 NBA Hall of Fame inductees. Rick Adelman, Ben Wallace, Jay Wright, Yolanda Griffith, Lorraine, Lorraine Jackson, Chris Bars, Paul Pierce, Chris Webber, and Bill Russell. Now, Bill Russell's already in the Hall of Fame as a player, but he'll, he's going to end also as a coach. He's the first black coach uh, to ever coach and the first black coach to ever win a championship as a coach. He was a player coach for the Boston Celtics and uh, they won it in, in back in 1968-69 season. So congratulations to the nine inductees. NBA player and NBA players associated will not be mandated to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Both sides continue to negotiate aspects of COVID-19 related protocols and procedures for the upcoming 2021-22 season. But the National Basketball Players Association has refused to budge on this demand that players not be required to take the vaccine. Roughly 85% of players are vaccinated. The league outlined a set of strict protocols for unvaccinated, unvaccinated players, such as, such as protocols include having lockers far from vaccinated teammates and having to eat, fly, and ride buses in different sections. Wow. So they, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, um, you know, just trying to protect everybody around one another. Yeah, you're right. I agree with you, Ruby. Not a sport person at all. Um, <laughs> don't know basketball from a baseball. <laughs> he doesn't. So true, yeah. Ruby. At least he's NBA honest about it. Star <laughs> Cedric Sabal is uh, COVID-19 free now. He But still, in intensive care un unit and dealing with several things relating to the virus. He is out of isolation. He still is unable to breathe, walk, or function on his own yet. He tweeted and says this, uh, this is his own words. On my 10th day in ICU, COVID-19 is officially kicking my butt. I am asking all family, friends, prayer warriors, healers for your prayers and well wish my recovery if I done and done anything to you in the past, allow me publicly apologize. He wants to apologize. My fight is not done. So um, this is what's happening. Uh, we will continue to uh, keep him in our prayers. Former Olympic gymnastics uh, Simone Biles and Ali, Ali Raceman were among those to tell the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday morning that current and former FBI agents should be held accountable for badly mishandling the Bureau's investigation into Larry Nassar, the disgraced doctor for the, for the Team USA. Larry Nassar has been accused of sexual harassment. Uh, I don't know if you can follow the story. Now, Biles was joined by multiple senators who questioned why the Department of Justice did not pursue criminal charges. The four gymnasts, of whom they were um, sexually assaulted by NASA during the time they were on the national team, Biles also called for officials from USAAG and the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee to be accountable for. Wow, some heavy things that's going on in the world of sports. And, you know, we hope that these young ladies will get their justice and uh, that that this here be a situation where um, this doctor and whoever else is involved with the doctor be have a turn, turn their cheek or turn a blind eye. This day, 1912, Major League, Major League Baseball center fielder Casey Stingle breaks into Brooklyn, breaks in with Brooklyn and hits four singles. I didn't know that Casey Stingle played baseball. I thought he was always a manager. That's something I just learned. 1917, Major League Baseball Hall of Famer Horace Wagner retires at 43. Pirates retire at his number 33. 1920, the NFL is born in Canton, Ohio. 12 teams is to pay $100 each to join the American Professional Football Association, renamed the NFL in 1922. 1931, Major League Baseball player Earl Webb of the Boston Red Sox hits his 65th double 
on route to 67, which still t- Redskins beat the Giants 13-3. T- 1947, Jackie Robinson was being rookie of the year by sporting things. That's the same year that he broke the color barrier. Then you don't know, you should know, that's in the history. Not only in Major League history, but it should be in the history books. 1950, San Francisco 49ers, formerly known as the AF, AAFC, played his first NFL game and lost 21-17. to 1953, Ernie Banks becomes the first Chicago Cubs, first black player. It took the Cubs six years, six years, six seasons to, uh, to bring um, uh, a man of color into its organization to play baseball. Better late than never. Thank you. Ernie Banks, one of the greatest. 1961, your Minnesota Vikings first game beat the Chicago Bears 37-13. 1964, Mickey Mello gets his 1,099 and 2,000 and 2001 hit and his 450 career home run all in one game. That's a very impressive, Mickey Mello. 1967, New Orleans Saints first game, losing to the LA Rams 27-13. 1979, player, player George Brett of the Kansas City Real is the sixth player to have 20 doubles, 20 triples, 20 home runs in a season. 1981, Major League player Fernando Valarela set an MS, uh, a National League record with eight shutouts in a season. 1984, Hall of Famer baseball player Reggie Jackson hits his 13, is the 13th player to hit 500 home runs. 1988, Major League player and Hall of Famer Jeff Real becomes the first relief pitcher to record 40 or more saves in both the American League and National League. Did it twice in both leagues. Congratulations. 2000 Hall of Famer NFL player great Dan Marino, number 13 jerseys retired by the Miami Dolphins. 2001, despite suffering lung cancer, Jack Buck stirs emotion of reading a patriotic theme during the pregame on the first night back of 9-11 terrorist attacks. I remember, I remember that so well. 2000, Jack, Jake Peavy. So I remember that game. I'm a bit, as you know, many of you know, I'm a San Francisco Giant fan. And in birthdays, 1927, NFL and AFL great kicker and quarterback George Blander was born in Yorkwood, Pennsylvania. 1934, tennis great Maureen Connolly born in San Diego, California. 1937, Orlando Cepeda, born in Ponce, Puerto Rico. Uh, 1945, NBA player and coach Phil Jackson, born in Dear Large, Montana. 1960, player, uh, Major League player, pitcher John Franco, born in Brooklyn, New York. All right, my first, my hometown, place I was born. In 1995, Patrick Mahomes, born in Tyler, Texas. And ladies and gentlemen, that is sports. Ruby is from Brooklyn, too. Who's from Brooklyn? Ruby. The one that just got finished saying that she's not a sports person. She doesn't know Ruby? a... Ruby. Are you, are you, Ruby, you were from Brooklyn? Yeah. Well, well, well. How do you she, like that? She, she's the well, one that says she's not a sports person. She doesn't know a basketball from a baseball. <laughs> we got you gotta, you, we gotta groom her. <laughs> yeah, Ruby. Now, you from Brooklyn, the Yankees, and Knicks. I go on and on. Look at all the, the, the sports people that came out of Brooklyn. Remember Floyd Patterson, the boxer? He yes. Was, he was from Brooklyn. Uh, he went to Boys High, my alma mater. Lenny uh, Wilkins went to Boys High, too. Yeah. Tommy Davis uh, from the Dodgers was from Brooklyn. And, uh, yeah, former singer Ronnie Dyson of yeah, Brooklyn A. That's right. That's right. Uh, I went to school with Ronnie Dyson. We used to, we used to sing together. Ronnie. Now, Ruby, don't make any excuses. You're 70 <laughs> years old, okay? And I'm pretty sure you don't even look 70, but that's a lot of history. If you want to know more history, tune in every every Friday around this time. <laughs> I'll give you some uh, history on sports. If you're not doing anything Thursday, uh, we'll talk back live. I'll give you some more history on sports. But... um. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we got to we gotta get into a sports arena. Uh, Ruby, I swear you would love sports if you got to know it, you know. Yeah. But, but maybe maybe she has other interests that she that she likes, which is which is okay, too. 
Yeah. You know, I didn't know that Casey Stingle played baseball either. I had no idea. Yeah, when I looked this up and did some research, I said it's amazing. Yeah. I always thought he was a oh he was a manager. Well, well, most yeah. most uh, most managers or people who become managers were once baseball players, which which makes a lot of sense. But I'm glad to know that Dick Casey did play ball because I always I only knew him as a manager. That was that was news to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to get back to that uh, that that the the. Um, the hearings on the gymnasts, the gymnasts, the four young ladies. Uh, I, I saw that hearing yesterday and it was a, I had a hard time watching it because of the uh, testimonies and, and particularly one of the girls who was molested by this Larry, uh, uh, what's his name? Larry, uh, Larry Nassau, Na La Larry Nassau, right? He was yeah. only 15 years old, 15 years old. And the reason why they're having these hearings now is because they're fighting back on the FBI who just clammed up, you know, they, they just clammed up. They, it was like one of the, the attitude was, was that it? Oh, well, you know. It's that's another it. case of turning the blind eye and not recognizing something that's so important and it's just so sad. It's yeah. really so sad, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, Anyway, uh, I, I, oh, I gotta tell you, Brian, when I left, uh, when I left uh, Charlotte a couple of weeks ago, we come back to New York, and then uh, a few days later, I had a, um, you know, a routine appointment with my primary doctor. So I went to his office, got checked out, and um, I told him, I said, you know, when I leave here, I'm gonna go over next door, down the street. There's a center where I can take the test because I just came back from Charlotte and I and I don't know who was on that plane, so I just want to take the test for safety. I know I'm okay, but I want to take it for safety. He said, yeah. He says, well, would you like to have it now? He gave me, he gave me the test right there in the office, right there in the wow. office. And wow. and uh, I'm, I'm happy to say I did come out negative. And not only did he give me the test, I got my, uh, 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 my, my shot, my... Uh, uh, um, uh, flu shot. Got my flu shot. Everything oh, in okay. one shot. Great. So I'm good. And in a couple of weeks or so, I'm going to go take another shot. I'm going to take what they call the pneumonia shot because when you get a certain age, there are more shots on the market now and you got to take them. That's about it. Yeah, but, but continue <laughs> to build up your immune system too. That also helps too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, Brian, that was great. We'll catch you back here next week for more sports on Sports Action, okay? Okay, everybody have a nice weekend. Everybody enjoy. Be safe. Ruby, I'll be I'll be waiting for you, okay? So come on now. <laughs> Take care. Take care, Brian. Okay, there you go. That's Brian Camp, and he's here every week, as you already know, with the latest developments in today's world of sports. That's his part of the 2020 feature. And, of course, uh, that sports update. And, of course, he'll be back here with us next week to uh, do it all over again. Sports is a, is a great thing. I grew up with sports. You know, I love sports. Um, Ruby says, didn't get the shot yet. Uh, didn't get the shot yet. Are you talking about initial, <coughs> your initial shots, your full uh, shots? Did you, or are you talking about the booster? She says she didn't get the shot yet at all, at all. Clue me on that one. Did you did you not take it at all, Ruby? Just just didn't take it at all, not even the first time. You know, let me know about that. Anyway, just in case you're just joining us, you're listening or you're watching at the same time. The Coffee Hour, which we're here each week. Of course, we bring you uh, entertainment and of course uh, uh, conversation, and um, we are going to uh, uh, move along. Ruby didn't take the shots at all, Ruby. I'm asking you, please, if you have any compassion for me, <laughs> no, actually for yourself, I urge you to take the shot, you know, unless of course there's a certain reason uh, that you don't want to take it and you don't have to discuss that either. That's your own private business. But I always recommend people to take the shot. I always recommend people to take the shot. But uh, Ruby, you know, just whatever your reason is uh i understand you know but i still here on this end of the uh platform is that i urge people to take that shot okay uh it's 20 to the hour right now and you know what that means right uh, 20 to the hour we always uh 
get information from DJ Pete. He's normally here at the t at this time, but uh, you know he's not here right now. So he left us all his information. His part of the 2020 feature is here, and he gives you information on uh, entertainment, people of entertainment. And so here we go. Here we go. Uh, September 12, 1924, entertainer Ella uh, May uh, Moss. Ella May Moss uh, is celebrating a birthday. Okay, this is her birthday on the 12th of September. Now, Ella May Moss uh, was an American singer, was an American singer for popular music uh, in the 40s and the 50s and records mixed jazz and blues and country style, all of that uh, in one. So uh, there she goes. And she passed away October 16th, 1966. And uh, she she would have been 75 years, uh, she would have been uh, 75 years old when she died. She was 75 years old when she died. So there you have that information right there. We move on and we see that uh, here's one of my favorite kind of guys. Riley King, Riley King, but you know him better as B.B. King. B.B. King, the king of the blues. I always said about him, the king of the blues. Uh, he was born September 5th, uh, 16th, which was yesterday, September 16th, 1925. And B.B. King known him uh, personally as, as I said, Riley King, Riley B. King, uh, known as B.B. King. Uh, professionally known as B.B. King, was an American blues singer, songwriter, guitarist, and a hell of a singer. <laughs> he, 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 knew, he knew how to work that blues. So he celebrated on the 16th. Now today's birthday, Hank Williams, born on this day, on this day in 1923, Hank Williams. And he's a country singer. On his day, he passed away on January 1st, 1953, at the age of 29 years old. Would you believe that? He was young when he passed away, 29 years old. And uh, he died from heart failure. So that's uh, one of our favorite. I still listen to his music. I still love his music. You know, his, that kind of music will never pass away. It will never die. And all the leg legends who produced that kind of music, uh, their music stay alive, too. On this day, too, born on this day as well, Sil Austin. Now, Sil Austin uh, may not be a name that you remember, but Sil Austin, uh, let's see, the information I have here, it, that was a, an American jazz saxophonist. And uh, he had his biggest success in the, uh, in the commercial uh, field. For the uh, for for the blues and the jazz, he had a real big success there. So you may not know the name, but uh, that's the man himself. Now a lot of you may not know this man. I know him. You know him. If you're in that age bracket, Frankie Avalon, and he's known for all of those uh, beach movies that he did with uh, Annette Funicello back in the old days. Uh, all of, he did a string of beach movies. Uh, he celebrates a birthday tomorrow, Frankie Avalon. Frankie Avalon has a sh show here on, uh, he's one of our, our colleagues here on uh, on Facebook Live. He has a show on Facebook Live, and uh, I, I pop in and I watch his show every now and then. And uh, today is his birthday, and he turns uh, 81. Tomorrow is his birthday, and he he's 81. He turns 82, I should say. Lived a long time, and... Uh, I want to see if I can get him on the show as well uh, on the Blue Cafe when we come out of hi uh, hiatus. So those are the birthdays, and I have birthdays of my own. Thank you, DJ P, for all of that information. I have birthdays of my own. Lamont uh, Macklemore, Lamont Macklemore of the Fifth Dimension. He's still alive and kicking. He's 82 today. The rest of these people are no longer with us, but they were legends in their own time. Uh, Anne Bancroft, actress Anne Bancroft, 91, jazz artist Jimmy uh, McGriff. Anne Bancroft would have been 91. Jimmy McGriff would have been 95. Bill Black of the Bill Black Combo, that famous tune, White Silver Sand, he would have been 95. Actress, singer Dorothy Loudon uh, would have been 96. And of course, I already mentioned Hank Williams. And he would have been 98 years old. So those are all the birthdays I have. Um, happy birthday to all of you, living and no longer with us. 
Now, DJ Pete has a radio show. If you like to uh, listen to it, I think you'll like it because he plays some of the artists that, of course, the birthdays that he just mentioned. Uh, he plays all of the artists uh, back music back then to the 40s, way back in the 40s, the early 40s, plays all of that. Hank Williams, I'm pretty sure you, you he plays little Hank Williams and all of that, you know. But you can check it out, and you can check out his radio program. And uh, that's on uh, www.radio. That's www.radio-airwaves.co.uk. It's a website where you can catch him Mondays from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And also you can catch him on WMPG Radio in Portland, Maine, which is his hometown. And when he goes to work over there, all he has to do is walk down the street. He lives close by the radio station. And if you can't catch him on the radio, the signal doesn't come out your way, go to the website. They have a website, www.wmpg.org, and you can catch them every other Tuesday between 8.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. And all times are Eastern in the United States and Canada. So there you have it, right there, right now. And just in case you're just joining us, it's the coffee hour where, let's see, it's uh, 13 minutes to the hour right now. It's the Coffee Hour. My name is Frank Allen, and of course, we're with you each week at this time. Sure, we're, we're with you each week at this time. And of course, um, we uh, have a lot of fun here doing what we do. A lot of fun doing what we do. Uh, I think we're off the air on YouTube. No, on Facebook. I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure what happened, but let me check. Let me double check because I'm looking at my studio monitor because sometimes that doesn't mean anything. Uh, let's see. I think we, we kind of shut off on the, I don't know what happened, uh, but I am going to uh, check it out. Mm, let's see, let's check it out, see what happens. Let me go here. I, I, I gotta do everything. I gotta do everything. I gotta make sure that we are on the air and uh, let's see what we're going to do. Let's see what we're going to do here. Uh, let's see, we'll clean that out and we'll get back to that. So let's see what we got. We'll, we'll get it back on YouTube. Of course, I'll go on YouTube, but we're still with you. Uh, and let's see. Uh, yeah, we're off the air, we're off the air. Uh, I don't know what happened, but we're going to get back right now. We're going to get back right now. Let's see how we do this. We're going to get back right now. We're going to get right back there and uh, do it right now. So, <laughs> how do we do it? Okay, we'll try it. We'll try it. Uh, let's see. We'll get it together somehow. We will get it together somehow. Okay, we we'll get it together somehow. Okay, we got. We, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. <laughs> I think we're back. Hello, hello, hello. I think we're back. <laughs> we're back. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what happened. If you're just joining us on YouTube, I'm sorry. We got cut off. We got cut off. I don't know what happened, uh, but we got cut off somehow. Uh, but we're back. We're back. I don't know what to say. I don't. Technical things happen sometimes. Anyway, uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, on YouTube, Facebook, you've been with us. Uh, okay, you're okay. But just in case you wonder, we dropped out on YouTube. You're tuned to the Coffee Hour, and we're right here with you every Friday between uh, 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern. And we bring you information. Of course, we have conversation and uh, a whole lot of fun. So those of you who are with us. You got, we got cut off. I hope you're back with us again. I see more people are coming back. They, they, they're coming back sooner or later. They're coming back. I'm so sorry we got cut off. So, ladies and gentlemen, while you're entering, excuse me while I shoot up. Okay, we're back. It's 10 minutes to the hour right now. And um, we've got, let's see, what do we have next? Of course, let me look here we've got movies you guys like those classic movies right those classic movies they go on and on and i love them 
those classic movies, they just keep on coming. And particularly uh, Turner Classic Movies. Now, I can't think of a better TV station than uh, TCM, where you can get all of those classic movies that you remember from years ago. And maybe some of them, uh, when they play them, they jogged your memory and you were looking forward to seeing these movies. And some of the movies that I remember that come to mind, sometimes uh, I don't see them on Turner Classic Movies. Not that I'm not saying that they don't play them, but I've never, you know, some I've never seen in a long time. But anyway, uh, if you're doing or not doing anything this weekend, you're staying home and you just want to just stay home with the family and you want a little more entertainment, well, here are my picks of the weeks for all of the Turner Classic movies. Let's start off with The Misfits uh, with uh, Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe. This is a 1961 film and it's coming on Turner Classic movie on Saturday, Saturday night. That's tonight. Uh, well, it's Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. So that's tonight uh, uh, at 12, 15 a.m. Eastern. That's tonight, right? Friday night, Saturday morning. And now if you don't want to stay up that late or if you're doing something else or you're planning on something else, you might want to DVR it and watch it at a later time. And again, that's uh, The Misfits with Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe. We also have The Wild One, a uh, 1954 film Marlon Brando was the uh, leading head there, uh, and that's going to be on Turner Classic Movies Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's uh, popcorn and peanuts and Cracker Jacks and a great movie in the afternoon. That's the wild one. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? I'm the only one here. That was a scene from a movie called Taxi Driver with... Uh, uh, Robert De Niro, remember that? Well, that's coming on too. That's coming on uh, uh, Sunday at 2 a.m. Sunday morning at 2 a.m. And that stars Robert De Niro and it's all on Turner Classic Movie. That's Taxi Driver. Jody uh, Foster had a play in there and other cast of characters as well. So Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro. Here's a great Western. I love Westerns. As a matter of fact, when I wake up on Saturday mornings, I glue my eyes to the TV because on me TV, it's all day Western starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. You get the Mavericks, you get the Gunsmokes, you get the Bonanzas, and uh, all, all, all of those uh, uh, Big Valley, all of those uh, great Westerns back then. But this one is a Western movie, not a Western series. This one is a Western movie that I remember back from 1951. This goes back to 1951, and it stars Robert Taylor. It's called Westward, The Women. A great Western. I love it. I can watch it a thousand times and not get tired of it. And that comes on this Sunday at 12 p.m. You could have lunch and a movie at the same time, 12 p.m. Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, right there on Turner Classic Movies. You also have Citizen Kane. That's coming up, too. It's a 1941 film starring um, Austin Wells. And that comes on at 12 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. It's 12 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. And so those are the movies of the week. Now, if you don't like these movies, and I couldn't imagine why you wouldn't, because they're great movies. Check them out for yourself if you've never seen them before. They're all great movies. They don't overlap each other, so you can check every one out in its entirety. So they don't overlap. The schedule is right there. They don't overlap. So... Uh, but if you want to check out something else, now I'm saying these are just my picks. These are just my picks. And of course, uh, there are other great movies too on Turner Classic Movies as well. And uh, they, all you have to do is go there, browse through the uh, schedule, and you can see other movies there. But those are just my picks. Now, you can do that. Also, if you're a cable subscriber, you could also go there to demand. Movie on Demand, they have a lot of great stuff. All the networks are there, including Turner Classic Movies. They have the icon you can press there and look at all of the movies that are there or that are available, and you can watch them right there, too. And you can watch them at your own convenience, on demand, right? You have other places, sporting uh, events that you might have missed on TV. They're right there on the networks, on the sports networks. And if you like Lifetime movies, Lifetime movies are right there. You can watch them all. Uh, whatever's available on, on there at the time, you can watch them. 
and all kinds of movies that you haven't seen in a long time are right there. I like wrestling, so whenever I miss a wrestling match, depending on what channel is on or what station is on, what network is on, I will go to that network and I will watch it. Uh, lucky for me, I didn't miss any of the uh, uh, the matches this week. I always try to make a point to watch them in real time. But it's always there for you, and you can always watch it. So uh, please be in mind, if you like entertainment and you like those great movies, go to it. I'll repeat the movies again. They're all classic movies. You'll love them. First of all, we have The, Mis Mis the Misfits, 1961, Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe, Saturday, 12, 15 a.m. That's Friday. That's tonight. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, and you can check it out. You have The Wild Ones with Marlon Brando from 1954. That's uh, Turner Classic Movie Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro Sunday, 2 a.m. Uh, on Turner Classic Movies. And West with the Women, a great Western uh, starring Robert Taylor. That's Sunday at 12 noon. And of course, Citizen Kane with uh, Austin Wells. Uh, Sunday, 2.15 p.m. So we have a great weekend of great entertainment and great movies on the way. And I think you're going to like it. So thank you so much for being with us. And thank all of you right here. It's uh, coffee hour. My name is Frank Allen. Mary Jacqueline is here. I am back. She says, I am back. Yeah, I am back. We, 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 we got knocked off the air for a minute or two. All right, so uh, we're back now. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mary says, uh, you're going to, uh, what, San, what? San, Gener San Gerino Fest. Oh, 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 uh, oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. As a, as a matter of fact, you know something? It's funny that you mentioned it, Mary. Just the other day, I cooked in, in my own home, in the comforts of my own home, a couple of days ago, I, I, was wondering what I was going to have for lunch. And then it came to me. I cooked sausage and peppers. Sausage and peppers. I cooked my own sausage and peppers, and they taste just like the Italian way. Uh, and I learned it. I learned it very well. I just had some. Yeah, so going to the uh, uh, San Gerinero uh, feast, uh, sausage and peppers and onions. Yeah, I put onions too as well. And yeah, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Uh, are you going? They have those all over the place, don't they? Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so there's a lot of entertainment and a lot of sausage and pepper eating and a lot of music and a lot of fun and it's all over the place. They're doing all of these things now because they're getting, uh, they're wrapping up summer. They want to make sure they get all the bids in so you can go to these uh, feasts and these festivals and these uh, street fairs that happen. We have a lot of those in New York City. And they, they, they're getting their licks in. People are going out and doing that. Get your last licks at Coney Island. That's all happening, too. And the weather's going to be great here in New York uh, for tomorrow, at least. You know, today it's a little iffy, peekaboo sunshine, and we're going to get periods of spotty showers or something like that. But nothing to wash your weekend out. Okay, there you go. Hey guys, that's going to do it for me. I thank you so much for being along with us on this Friday. We'll be back, of course, um, next Thursday for uh, uh, Talk Back Live. Talk Back Live. Uh, Brian Kent will be with me with the latest developments in today's world of sports, sports update. We do that every Thursday between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern. Join us for that. Uh, and we look forward to it. Other than that, I will be back here next week, right and early, 10 a.m. from 10 to 11 with more of the coffee hour. DJ Pete will be here uh, with his part of the 2020 feature, 20 to the hour, Brian Camp, of course, 20 after the hour with sports update, and we'll have a whole lot of fun. I thank you guys for being along with us. You guys stay safe. Have a great day, a great weekend, and uh, please make sure you stay on the safe side. Continue to wear your mask, and please, again, get vaccinated. I'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>